Okay, welcome to day five of the celebration of difference. I am so grateful for all of you for being here, for contributing to this amazing series and these conversations. Um, I was just um, out in my hot tub and um, really I, one of the things I love about this time of year is the quiet, especially today and tomorrow. Um, maybe the quietest days of the year in a way, you know, it depends on what you're doing. <laughs> they might also be the most raucous. Um, but there is this sense of like the winter for at least in, in the Northern hemisphere, the sense of like winter. And for me, where I am, my, my neighborhood is very quiet and, um, nobody's out today. Like I live by a trailhead and usually there's lots of people hiking and stuff and nobody's out. Um, and, um, I'm really enjoying that. And I was just sitting there thinking about space. And one of the things about X-Men weirdos, you know, um, is that we, we all, um, we have access to and actually function from quite a bit of space. And what does that mean? Well, space is basically, to me, space is the absence of judgment. Um, it's when judgment just is not, is not there. And, um, that is our world inherently as X-Men. And, um, we don't always feel like we have access to that because, in addition to being very spacious, we also have, I mean, part of the spaciousness is having so much awareness and being aware of other people and the thoughts, feelings, and emotions of everybody for miles around and the judgments. And, you know, and when you get into like a party situation or whatever, you're, you know, you've got these, um, you've got these, uh, um, you know, you, you're just aware of like everybody and especially on Christmas, like people get disappointed and they get upset and they hate being around family, but they don't talk about it. Like there's all this stuff that goes on. And as an X-Men, you're aware of it, even if you don't know that you're aware of it and, and not knowing that you're aware of it can oftentimes be um, kind of the hardest part, um, which is why a lot of people find this conversation so enlightening because it, it, it speaks to and acknowledges and addresses your awareness that you're, that you're always living with. Um, but nobody has taught you about it. Nobody has talked to you about it. And so we, um, you know, we live with this, we live with like the world kind of in our inner world, a lot of times with the ability and the capacity to occupy a lot of space. But oftentimes what happens is we look for that space outside of ourselves, like in a relationship or a situation or a, you know, creating a particular reality in our lives where we can actually have that sense of space. Um, but it's fleeting, you know, if, if, if at all, even possible, um, it's very fleeting. And, um, and we, um, because, you know, I mean, in the, the, in the, like the messaging in the, in this reality is that you go, that you, you like, what's happening in here in your own world inside of you is not actually something that, um, has any value, you know, and, um, you as a being have no value. This reality is inherently abusive against our being because it does not validate or acknowledge our being and acknowledges and validates everything that's not that. So you don't have value. You as a being do not have value in this reality, but what you do have is, um, you, you what, what does make you valuable is all the external things. Like, you know, what are your relationships? Like, what do you look like? You know, um, well, how much money do you have? How successful are you? You know? Um, and that is, it's so devoid of space, uh, like the space of possibility and the space of, allowance and the space of no point of view and the space of being an infinite being. It's so devoid of that, that we really don't, um, we really don't, um, 
we don't, um, and, and we grow up in that, we grow up like steeped in that, you know, so we, we don't know that we don't know what else is possible until we start to explore that. And the only place that you can really explore it is with you. And it turns out like from what I've found with me is that, and, and I, you know, with a lot of other people that I've worked with over the years, it's like, you are that space. Like you don't have to go anywhere to look for it. And when you do go somewhere to a relationship, to a financial reality, to a business reality, to whatever, when you go outside of you and you make something the source outside of you, or a lot of things, the source, which is what most people do outside of you, um, obviously you're never going to find it um, because you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Um, you know, if you go to, into your junk drawer to find your keys and they're not in there, <laughs> they're actually in your purse, you know, um, you're never going to find them, you know, unless you look, you start to look elsewhere. And this is the beauty to me. One of the most amazing and phenomenal things about this conversation is that we begin to find these incredible spaces inside of ourselves that can only be found inside of you because it's who you be. And, um, and we have, like, I was sitting in my hot tub and I was looking at the trees. I have these amazing trees in my yard and looking at the sky and there was nobody around. It was like dead silent. And it's like, this is, this is me. This is us. And when, and there's a, there's a, a balm, B-A-L-M, not B-O-M-B. There's a balm. Um, that that space can be a balm for our soul. Um, it it is this. Um, it's 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 coming home, you know, for a lot of us. And also one of the reasons why the holidays can be so challenging is because there's, you know, even though there's this like. To me, it feels like the earth is very still and quiet right now, at least in the winter realms of the world. Um, but, you know, there's this also this cacophony of this reality going on around that is, makes it, you know, unless you're really attuned to, and like energetically, you know, you've done the work to tune into you. And it's not like you do the work and you're done. There's always more to explore with that and always more to do with that. Um, we don't, you know, you, it's, it's the same thing. Like you're not, you're going to be distracted by the cacophony of other people's minds, other people's realities, and not actually have access to that space that you be. And so, um, so it's, and, and, and I noticed for myself that there's a lot of times where I don't, I don't necessarily, it, you know, there's, a, there, it's a bit of a muscle. It's a lot of a muscle to be, um, you know, really like occupying that space. And, and it's like going to the gym, you, you know, you, if you keep going or you keep, you know, working out, whatever, you, you'll keep, the muscle will continue to be strong and get stronger. Um, and if you don't, you know, it will atrophy. And sometimes when things are more challenging around you, there's more noise around you, the, the cacophony of the rest of the world is louder for whatever reason, um, then it requires extra muscle, you know, to be able to occupy the space of you. Um, and, um, you know, no matter what's going on around you. Um, and that can be a real challenge during the holidays. Um, but know that, you know, the space of you comes with, I mean, it is, it is, it is actually your greatest potency. Um, and it is your greatest gift for you and the world. Um, and it's this quiet space where, you may, it may seem boring. It may seem like there's nothing going on. It may seem like, um, you know, you, you like it's absent of things. Well, it is absent of things. It's absent of the cacophony of this reality. It's absent of like the hyper awareness of other people's 
minds or you can still have that awareness, but you can have it with the space when you acknowledge that what you're, what's going on in your inner world isn't yours. So you can ask, who does this belong to, or is this mine? Two amazing uh, questions that get to the same thing of, you know, oh wait, this isn't like, I'm just aware. I'm just aware here, you know? Um, and I like to ask, is this mine a lot? Um, cause sometimes when we ask, who does this belong to? It's like, you then go into trying to figure out who it belongs to. Um, like whose thoughts and feelings are you aware of? Well, it doesn't really matter. What really matters is that you acknowledge that they're not yours. So is this mine? No, it's not mine. Okay, cool. I'm just aware. You cannot make your awareness go away. We try. We try to make our awareness go away by distracting ourselves, by busying ourselves with the cacophony of this reality, by, you know, looking to other people, to this reality, to whatever, to try to determine what's true. We distract ourselves by, um, by, you know, just not being present um, and by like having all kinds of stories going through our own world. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, like really being willing to be with the silence of you and the space of you is um, where you're going to find so much. And this is also the, the creative universe. Like this is where creation really begins and creation, um, creation and generation, like they, they, there's this thing where like new choices, new creations begin to brew in that space as you be present with you and present with what's actually true for you and the potency of you as a lot of blank space actually. <laughs> um, and, but it's not actually blank. It's, it's robust and it's full and it's, it's everything. Everything is accessible to you there as that space, because that's you, you as an infinite being. And this to me is where, um, where um, um, the um, the uh, like you know we are infinite beings and and we cannot you can't find you as an infinite being in the world you can only find you as an infinite being in the space of you. And, um, that's where all of your capacities are. And that's where all of your awareness is. And when you create your life from awareness, you create your business, your relationships, your money, your body, your reality, you know, your relationship with the earth, like all these things from what you know, as a uniquely unique, uniquely wonderful weirdo, <laughs> um, as the difference that you be. This is where everything flourishes. Everything flourishes from here. Um, and it's not, you know, it doesn't, um, it doesn't look like it will for anybody else. It doesn't look like it does for anybody else, but it looks like it does for you. And in there, in that universe is so much possibility. And you'll have all these things that just pop in your world where you're like, oh, this and that and this, and I could do this and I could do that. And I could go here and there and talk to this person and have this thing and be really quiet right now. And, you know, and all these things are like the breadcrumbs of the universe leading you in the direction of something greater. And that's such a gift. It's such a different way of creating our lives. Such a gift. So would you be willing to give yourself the gift of you, like being with you, getting out of judgment of you. When you go to judge you, just stop. It's, it's honestly as simple as that. And sometimes it feels like we can, we can't get there, you know, and this is why the tools of access consciousness are so great. You can be interesting point of view. You, like there's so many tools that you can pick up and use. Um, but ultimately the way that you, the way that you turn off the potency of the space of you is by going to judgment of you and just going to judgment period. 
And the way that you get out of judgment is by stopping it, which I always say is the most advanced tool in access consciousness. Um, stop. When you are, when you find yourself judging you, the only way the judgment is going to go away is if you choose in that moment to stop, turn it around, flip it on its head. We talked about that a couple of days ago. Um, get to gratitude, look up at the sky, look at, you know, look outside, um, you know, have gratitude for your body. Um, just something, get totally quiet for two minutes, you know, something, ask a question because it's in those moments that we also exercise and build the muscle of getting out of judgment of ourselves. And when we do that, then there is, there are just universes that become available that were not available before. And, um, and this is where, um, you know, it's like the only way to create a different reality is to choose it. And you choose it in the moment by going, I'm judging me right now. I'm eliminating the space of me. I'm eliminating possibility. I'm eliminating me as an infinite being. And I'm eliminating ease. For what reason would I choose that? If I can stop doing that right now, I can also stop doing it in 10 seconds and I can also stop doing it later on today and tonight and tomorrow and, 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 and you build the muscle and you develop this space of something totally different. So it's definitely, um, you know, it's a big convert. This is more of like a macro conversation today, but I wanted to bring it in and just sort of inject this energetically into all of our worlds, especially leading into or right in the middle of, you know, Christmas and Christmas Eve and all of that. Um, and just know that it's, it's not about getting anywhere. It's about the journey, you know, and the choice and, um, you know, what's actually available to us and just continuing to choose that, you know, continuing to become, more adept with that energetic reality that is your reality um, and living that. And then you be, you begin to be this gift to other people. Sometimes you also piss people off, <laughs> but you be this gift to other people that um, is, is truly, um, truly has no words. Um, it's truly beyond this reality and you be that gift to you. So, um, thank you all so much. I wish you a merry, merry Christmas, Christmas Eve. Um, may you have and be the space of you no matter what. And um, tomorrow's our last day. Uh, we'll be here on Christmas and um, I look forward to it. I'll let you guys know when, when I know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, probably sometime, it'll be sometime Europe friendly. So before 2 p.m. in uh, Colorado um, for 1, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and um, yeah, thank you all. Just thank you, thank you. Mwah. Have a beautiful day.